This is Jonathan Ferguson, the keeper of firearms and artillery at the Royal Armouries Museum in the UK, which houses a collection of thousands of iconic weapons from throughout history. And today he's going to be breaking down the guns of 2017's Call of Duty World War II to see how accurately the period weaponry is portrayed in the game. There are no optical sights in use in the Second World War. Get your modern war warfare out of my World War II. Let us know if there are any other games, guns or mechanics you want Jonathan to break down in the comments section below. Make sure you subscribe for more videos like this. And if you want to support Jonathan's work and the Royal Armouries Museum, check out the links in the description of this video. All right, time to hit the battlefield of Call of Duty World War II. They're coming! And pausing, because we may as well do the ping. One of the most iconic features of the M1 rifle, or the Garand, as it's long been known, is that ping sound. But even when they're being cycled rather than fired, uh, you will get that ping sound. It's the, uh, fundamental to how the weapon works. So you have a, a clip of eight rounds. The whole thing goes into the weapon, stays in the gun until the last round's fired, and then the mechanism punts out the empty clip. And that bit of uh, tempered steel is what oscillates as it's thrown out of the gun and makes that iconic ringing sound. Keep firing! That, that, that gun is still alive! And the other thing I'm noticing here is this um, aiming down the sights view that, that we have. And the rear sight looks a bit funky. It's this massive sort of rounded ring, almost looks like a curtain ring. And that's not what the M1's rear sight looks like. But the actual aperture itself, this is such a minor detail. And it's very likely a gameplay thing. If, they, if, if it was modeled correctly, it would be quite hard to get the realistic view because your eye automatically focuses through that ring and it actually looks a little bit like we see on screen but just like in real life in the game you're not really focusing on what shape the rear sight is when you're shooting at the Germans. They're rushing the stairs! Pausing. Unlike the modern age there aren't that many accessories for rifles of the second world war period. Uh, the bayonet is an important one. Another one that's very rarely depicted in games is the grenade launcher. Um, today we're used to thinking of a grenade launcher either as a standalone weapon or as something that fits under the barrel of your weapon. So the grenade we see in the game is a fragmentation anti-personnel type grenade. This one is a practice version of an anti-tank type of grenade and it just slips over the spigot and with special grenade launching cartridges, this thing just gets punted off the end. So you don't see them particularly often and your primary anti-tank weapons in the Second World War become shoulder-fired weapons. Uh, things like the bazooka, they're far more effective. So it's always interesting for me to see rifle grenades depicted in games. Pausing. The next weapon I'm seeing is the uh, what people tend to call the PPSH-41, but I'm trying to get into the habit of calling the Papa Shah, because that's how it should really be said. But it's another iconic submachine gun of the period. There are so many of this period. It's the heyday, really, of the submachine gun. It's a very high rate of fire. From memory, higher than what we're seeing in this footage. It's a good 900 plus rounds per minute. So that high, high rate of fire combined with a 71 round drum magazine, so it's a lot of firepower in a small package. What we see on the, in the game is not this magazine at all. The magazine we see in the game is this one. You don't need to modify the weapon, you don't need a different magazine well or anything like that. It is completely interchangeable. And it's a lower capacity, obviously, you can see that right away. But it's a lot less heavy and bulky than the drum mag. As the months wore on during the war, you're gonna find more of these magazines in use. It is a little odd seeing German soldiers in 1944 in Western Europe with Soviet submachine guns. Probably not impossible that they might have got their hands on those, but it's a lot less likely in this theater that you're gonna come across captured Russian uh, Papasha. I suspect it's just that the developers wanted it in the game. <laughs> and I can't blame them. It's an excellent submachine gun uh, and an amazing piece of history. The artillery guns are just up there. Get some charges on those guns. So I've just grabbed the, the Mauser Schnellfeuer, which is the select fire and semi-automatic 
C96 Mauser pistol. The first thing you notice, of course, in the gameplay footage is that we've got one in each hand and we're running and gunning with them. Fair enough, it's a game. It's not really that practical to do that. This thing on its own, without the buttstock, is pretty much impossible to aim. Never mind one-handed, never mind both at once. But the way you'd want to use it is as a submachine gun. You fit the shoulder stock, which is also the holster, because now you've got four points of contact, shoulder, cheek, this hand and then the other hand on the magazine well and you can actually fire short bursts quite effectively. Depiction wise it's a bit off. The hammer it appears to be solid whereas all broom handle hammers have cone hammers because they're shaped like cones. The big omission is the selector switch. You know, the heart of this thing as a, as a package is the selector switch to switch it to automatic. We only see the weapon fired on automatic and we don't see a switch, which is um, doesn't really make any sense. So that's that's the shell foyer. Makes perfect sense for the setting. It's very cool. And why wouldn't you use two at once when we're talking about entertainment? Cover fire from the left. Enemies on the second floor. Pausing the Thompson gun. Um, you cannot have a second world war game without a Thompson gun. And there are a few different variants to choose from, so these guys have chosen both at the same time. So it's perfectly plausible to see a gun of this rough shape in use with a drum magazine. But what we see here is not a 1928 model Thompson, it is an M1 or an M1A1. So here is uh, what we're really seeing here, which is the M1, this is an M1A1. Very quickly, no cuts in the receiver for the drum mag. Very, very obviously, if you, if you know your Thompsons, doesn't have the cocking handle on the top of the weapon anymore. It's on the side. The only real issue with the depiction of the weapon, other than it being the wrong variant, is the reload. It's what's known as an open bolt gun, so it fires from this position, which is something that a lot of games miss. So you pull the trigger, the bolt goes forward, chambers around, fires it, and then comes back to that position. When it goes click, which is a sound you don't want to hear, the bolt is going to be forward. So when you swap over your magazine, you can't just pull the trigger. Nothing's getting chambered and fired. What you have to do is recock the weapon. Just like in, a, in any reload animation you've seen of, a, of an AK, it's magazine on, recock, and the game gets that wrong, unfortunately. I'm going in! Oh Pausing. This is a really interesting weapon to have put into World War II. It's an interesting weapon to, to appear in the in the war because it's essentially a double barrel shotgun. It's a sporting weapon. So this was the Model 30, as it's correctly designated in the game, was designed based on a double barrel side-by-side -side sporting shotgun for Luftwaffe crews so that they would have a capable uh, survival as well as self-defense weapon if they were downed. Uh, it's pretty well depicted in the game, the, the you know, modeling wise, uh, in terms of the break action, although that's pretty standard shotgun stuff. The first thing you spot, of course, probably is the third barrel. And in the game, you very clearly see the third barrel. In fact, the um, character even puts his finger over that third cartridge to stop it from being ejected because it's not been fired yet. And in single player, it doesn't get fired at all. There is an unlock, I gather, for the very long uh, rifle cartridge, because this is a rifled barrel underneath the other two barrels. So it does feature in the game, but not in single player. The other interesting thing is, and people may have wondered about this one, at one point, we see the sight flip up. Now, what that is, is switching to rifle mode. What looks to be a safety on the rear here is in fact converting the or switching the fire, the firing pins, from the shotgun cartridges to the rifle cartridge, a little mechanism flips up your long range sight. The only criticism I might have is, the way it's modeled is, you can see that uh, rifle rear sight partway down the barrel doesn't move, and it does move on this one. They've added a second sight closer to the player's eye that actually flips up. And I'm pretty sure that the developers have just had to put a rear sight further to the rear, and they've just left this one modeled on the gun. On your go. This was a weird one. I remember this mission pretty pretty clearly. The grease gun, the M3 grease gun being used as a 
as a weapon of stealth is on the face of it a bit surprising, but suppressed grease guns did exist. This was designed for the Office of Strategic Services. Now the big red flag, as it were, for, for the realism side is seeing the guys quick detaching and reattaching the suppressor. That's what kind of drew me out of it a little bit. Because in real life, if you wanted to switch from an unsuppressed grease gun to a suppressed grease gun, you'd have to throw away your suppressed grease gun. That kind of quick detach suppressor was not really a thing yet in the Second World War. The gun itself, I think, is, is well modeled. It's the original M3, not the M3A1. So it has this sort of comedy crank handle, locking handle, which was one of the main features that was changed for the A1. Well done. Always interesting to look at how suppressed weapons are depicted in terms of their report, their sound in the game versus um, reality. This would have been a very quiet weapon. The problem with it and things like the Mark II S Sten gun, so open bolt submachine guns with suppressors on them, is that the bolt moving back and forth makes quite a noise as it is. So in the dead of night, in the middle of someone's house, you're still going to hear, but you're still, you're getting that twice. You're getting it blown back and then clacking forward again. Most suppressed weapons will also have some sort of a pop from the muzzle equivalent to an air pistol at the very least. Yeah, it's not it's not it's not wildly inaccurate like the old Hollywood sort of laser gun sound, but it's maybe a bit too quiet. The MP40, it's one of those weapons you can't really not have. It's it's the uh, archetypal bad guy's gun. So the way it's depicted in the game is there's not much to say about really. Um, they've done a good job. The very low recoil of the weapon is, is effectively modeled pretty well. This thing's got a tremendously good spring buffer in it, and it's kind of like a sewing machine. It just sits there clacking away. Pausing. I can't let the clip of the optical sight go, I'm afraid. Sorry, guys. There are no optical sights, no reflex sights like, like we see here in use on small arms in the Second World War. What this is, is a couple of decades of modern warfare bleeding through to our Second World War. So um, get your modern war warfare out of my World War II, I suppose is what I would say there. Pausing. The MP43, MP44, SGG44, they're all functionally the same gun. The, the concept here really was a submachine gun on steroids. It was to scale up the submachine gun and its little pistol cartridge, not very damaging, to something more, more powerful. Or if you want to look at it the other way, it's scaling down the rifle, the, the self-loading rifle, to something more compact with a fully automatic capability. I'm sure people wouldn't are not averse to seeing a real um, STG. This example I've chosen to make a specific point, which is that some optical sights were in use on weapons like this in the Second World War. What, what I like about this footage, actually, um, I can't remember how I used the, the gun in the game, it's been a while, but um, is the way we see the rifle used as it was intended. So although we don't have switchable fire modes in this game, we see single shots because it's, it's slow enough that you can pull off single shots. We see short bursts, which, which give you more sort of stopping power effectively and a greater chance of hitting. And we see automatic fire like a submachine gun. And that's exactly what this was designed for, to do all of those things. Germany really nailed it with the assault rifle first time, which, which is pretty impressive, um, but a bit too late in the war to make any significant difference. Okay guys, thanks very much for watching this breakdown of the weapons of Call of Duty World War II. If you would like to support the museum and help us keep doing this sort of thing with our friends at GameSpot, there is a donation link down below in the description for the video. Uh, no pressure at all, but we would appreciate um, any donations that you feel you can afford. Thanks again.